Good afternoon and welcome to episode three of Discuss with Russ. I'm Russell Rivera, founder and president of Voice Wealth Management. Voice primarily helps young professionals, entrepreneurs, and their families get the most out of their money by assisting with budgeting, investing, and planning. Knowing the emotions that come along with money, I see myself as a financial therapist as well. You can learn more about us by visiting our website at www.voicewealth.com or emailing me at russell.rivera, that's two S's and two L's, at voicewealth.com. So again, I started to discuss with Russ last week. We had our first couple of episodes last week, um, and those will be available on YouTube probably a little bit later today or tomorrow. Uh, but I started to discuss with Russ to help people take an optimistic look at the crisis, what you can learn, what can you change, and how you can emerge improved on the other side, whether it be having to do with your money, your business, or other aspects of your life. Our topic today is staying mentally and physically fit in the age of COVID. And I'm proud to welcome our guests, Amy Salmon and Lisa Snow. Amy is the founder and the CEO of The Wellness Map. She's a nutrition and wellness educator and enthusiast. The Wellness Map creates nutrition and wellness programs for individuals, families, and corporations to help others achieve their most vibrant health. Amy has been a guest speaker on the Greenberg News Show, Madhouse TV, and Smart Women Invest, and leads nutrition lectures and events throughout the tri-state area. You can learn more about Amy and her company at www.thewellnessmap.org. Lisa Snow is founder and lead instructor of On The Men Customized Fitness and Massage. A graduate of NYU, Lisa received her trainer certification in 2005 and has since trained every type of person, from kids to individuals in their 90s, from the chronically ill and disabled to professional performers. Formerly a gymnast, she understands not just the science of training, but the art as well. You can learn about Lisa at onthemendfitness.com. Good afternoon to both of you and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Great. Uh, great so, here. Great, uh, thank you both again. Um, so I wanted to kind of start the conversation and you know, talking about you know, a little bit like where we were before all this started, right? We want to kind of take us, you know, where, where, where do you think people were in terms of, or what were the trends in, in fitness and wellness and health and before all of this happened, right? Before we started being afraid to step outside of our house or, or whatever it might be. So let's start there. I mean, you know, what, what, what do you think were kind of some of the trends that were going on? Did you see things improving from your points of view? What was, you know, where were people and kind of before we get into where we are now? Lisa, Amy? I think some of the big trends were, you know, people realizing that they need social support. And so small group training or semi-private training was really starting to take off. And I think people were just more willing to talk about exercise and it was becoming less of a weird thing. So I think those were all kind of positive trends and now we're in a totally different place. Amy, you have anything to add on that? I mean, as far as nutrition goes, what, when isn't nutrition a trend, right? <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like nutrition is always, always a trend because there's always a new diet out there or something happening. So someone's always talking about something to do with nutrition. Sure. And, and since this has happened, you know, I've heard about a wide variety of outcomes on, on how people are dealing with a crisis, right? Some are missing their gyms, some are missing their favorite restaurants, some are missing their favorite foods, uh, whether they're healthy or unhealthy, right? Like you can't get you know, plain pasta off the shelf anymore. So what are the challenge, some of the challenges you're hearing people go through uh, during this time relating to eating and staying fit? So um, you know, I, can't, I can't see Lisa, so I, I could jump in here. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. Uh, definitely people have le less access to foods in the supermarket and they're not shopping as frequently. Um, people are under a great deal of stress. So there's much more emotional eating happening and also drinking. Um, people are homeschooling their kids. So they're finding less time to cook and also reduced income. So there's less budget for food as well. So those are I'm sorry, go ahead, Amy. I was just saying, those are the, some, of the thing, some of the things I'm here. Lisa? <clears throat> so 
We certainly have people who used to love to work out and are now really missing their gym and feeling incredibly cooped up in their apartment. And the challenge for them is that outdoor space isn't any better. I mean, we have clients across the four boroughs in Lower Westchester. And if you're in Manhattan or Brooklyn right now, going to a park could be so crowded. It can just be really frustrating. And sometimes people are just giving up and going home. Um, and then you have a completely different group of people who've never really worked out, maybe since high school or college. And they didn't think they were getting any exercise, big air quotes before, but really they were because they were walking to a bus stop or a subway station or a Metro North or a LIRR station. And now all that's not happening. So I think being cooped up makes people feel physically tired. I think if you've just been sitting for 12 or 14 hours, sometimes you feel like you've done a two hour run when you really haven't done anything. And that's not all in your head. That's a real physical thing that people are dealing with. So, you know, there's a huge mental health component to it too, right? We don't realize how moving physically keeps us from going crazy. Fair, fair enough. Um, so we've been focusing a little bit, you know, we're gonna start a little bit, I guess, on the, on the nutrition side, maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, obviously restaurants have been closed and, and whether that's led to people's kind of range of options in terms of eating uh, being lowered, I, I would think that would be one thing that obviously people are kind of not thinking about or, or kind of feeling bad about. Um, you know, what are the positives from, from a health point of view uh, of this circumstance of the restaurants being closed from a personal health perspective? Do you, do you want yeah, to- Yeah, go ahead, Amy, yeah. Um, um, this is right up your alley, so. <laughs> People are saving money, which, which is a great thing. 68% um, more people are actually cooking uh, at home, which is really great. So hope it, hopefully they're making more nutritious choices and cooking healthy meals. Also 40% uh, more people are buying whole foods, which is great because a lot of people were stocking up on shelved items, which were processed. So certainly there's a rise in buying more whole foods. Um, lots of recipe sharing. I know I've certainly gotten these sort of chain emails about sharing recipes and sending out to 20 friends. Uh, so hopefully people are sharing good quality recipes. And on the other side of the emotional eating aspect, people are losing a lot of weight because they're not eating the large quantities of foods that they generally eat when they're out at a restaurant. So and, people are losing weight as well. And, and that's certainly something I know has been happening for me. I think my wife and I have both lost 10 pounds um, as a result of this because we're not uh, at a restaurant where I feel like I could eat everything on the plate. Uh, so, you know, it's like I could eat five bites and I'm like, oh, I, I guess I just ate. <laughs> you know, I know I'm dealing with that. Lisa, you have anything to add there? I think it really depends what people were ordering before. Certainly the people who've been ordering five entrees in a restaurant are, uh, are doing a little bit better eating at home. You know, I think there are so many healthy restaurants in the city that people really miss. And I think healthier food in restaurants has been a huge trend for the past couple of years. So I hope that some of those healthier chains really come back after this crisis. And, and especially for the people who don't know how to cook, A, cooking is fun. It's not as hard as you think. And everyone is a terrible cook before they're a good cook. So, you know, I would just encourage you to try making some things and try to make some terrible things and, and be okay with that because the next round will be better. And if you are in an area where you still can order takeout, there are so many takeout places now that do salads or do grain bowls with vegetables and proteins. So fast food isn't the only takeout. Yeah, sure. And, and, and you know, on the cooking side, I think I was telling this to Amy separately and, and you, Lisa, as well. It, it's really great that, that my son has now decided to do 70% of the cooking in the house. Uh, you know, he's picked his favorite recipes to eat and make, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make this now. Leave me alone. Uh, so I certainly can't complain about that. That's been a, a positive development in my household, and for him, too, that he's doing it, uh, getting some of his energy out. Um, so, you know, we've talked about, you know, uh, some of the positives that are coming out of people doing more things at home, uh, have, you know, from, from a health perspective. What other improvements can people start 
with during even and after this webinar to get started in making positive changes. And, and obviously I haven't asked you sort of some, you know, we all kind of know eating at home, um, you know, home cooking meals makes us, you know, eat a little bit healthier and uh, eat less, or, or at least in my experience, uh, unless you're stress eating as Amy referred to, uh, you know, what else can people do uh, to take the opportunity to look at what they're doing now and, and, and take care of themselves and, and try to start affecting positive change? Going. What I see is people spending a lot more time with their families. As a trainer, I've always told people, hey, if their schedule works out, bring your spouse, bring a kid, bring all your kids, right? And we charge them per session, not per person. So people are, have always been willing to do that. And most of the time, people's schedules haven't aligned. So it's just been them. And now that we're doing sessions over Zoom calls like this, so many more people have been bringing their partner or bringing their kids. So it's been really fun to meet them and it's been really fun to watch them spend more time together. So whether it's with family or with someone else, I know people feel like because of social distancing, they can't do things with other people, but even if it's not a trainer, call up a friend and get on a Zoom call and, and work out together. Amy? Yeah, so I, I hope that um, what people can do in the moment, <clears throat> I don't want to take away from the fact that people are feeling um, a whole host of emotions. I mean, it's a stressful time. People are feeling anxious. They're feeling sad. They're feeling lonely. Whatever's coming up for people, I think it's really important to recognize the, those emotions and have space for those emotions. I, I mean, I, I've said this before, where all human beings having a human experience, right? But what I also hope is that people can find meaning in this time. Um, and what that might look like is that, let's say you were a working parent and didn't have time to see your kids off in the morning or have dinner in the evening with them. Um, you can look at it as a time to really uh, have this, this new connection with loved ones or maybe more time to work on your business or a hobby. Um, I see so many acts of kindness. I have friends with food companies and they're, they're giving away food to um, all the nurses uh, and, and doctors at hospitals. People are helping other people in their buildings. They're collecting grocery lists and going shopping for people and, and uh, making larger batches of food and helping other people um, like that. Also reaching out and connecting with loved ones and friends um, like this, you know, face to face, not by phone, so that you don't lose that connection. So, you know, that really all contributes to our overall well being. And, uh, you know, I really hope people at the same time and recognizing that this is a challenging time, they can also recognize where there's, um, you know, lots of meaning. Uh, th thank you, Amy. And, and I did want to mention to those in the audience, I, I'd forgotten to mention at the top, uh, we do have the Q&A button at the bottom. If you do have a question, if it's appropriate at the time uh, that you bring it up, uh, the, all the panelists, including myself, can see your question. Uh, we'll try to address it. If not, we'll save it for the end, but there will be Q&A. And, &A and we, we want to encourage you to interact with us and, and share your questions. So, um, so, you know, we've been talking about, you mentioned the, the, the psychological aspect and, and, you know, I, when dealing with money, I'm always thinking about kind of the psychological aspects of dealing with, with helping people use their money well. But um, in terms of, you know, other things people can do to manage their overall health, uh, what else can they do, especially while most doctors are closed, right? You, I, I got a, a note this morning that my dentist is now closed for the month of May and, and there goes my there goes my, you know, my six month well checkup. I'm supposed to take a physical in May. That's when I would take it. So, you know, uh, in, in terms of these regular maintenance things, or even if they had something uh, that, that might have been a little bit more urgent that they were dealing with or something more chronic, what else can they do since they can't go see their doctor? So um, for me, I think such an important aspect is focusing on you know, how we're eating, because um, our immune health is, is so important, right? When we have a healthy immune system, it not only um, helps keep us healthy, but if we do get sick, um, it, del it delays, it shortens the amount of time that we stay sick, right? So what we're seeing right now, especially with COVID and not all the information is out by the experts, but those going in with um, 
underlying causes, you know, uh, compromised immune systems, which I have, you know, I have uh, Hashimoto's disease or people with heart disease and people with obesity, they're having a much harder time fighting off illness and, and um, you know, also those are people that are dying from the illness. So when we strengthen our immune system, that really, really is always a, a positive thing. So eating lots of whole foods like fresh fruits and vegetables, I always say to people, you know, eat the rainbow. You wanna get lots of vitamins and minerals and those phytonutrients, which are these powerful plant chemicals, which help both reverse and prevent disease and keep us healthy. Um, eating, eating healthy fats like avocados and extra virgin olive oil, nuts and seeds and coconut oils. And, um, and lots of quality protein. So grass-fed beef or organic cuts of chicken and turkey and, um, and wild fish. I know that even I've had a hard time finding that in the supermarkets, but do the best you can. These all help lower inflammation in the body. Drinking plenty of water, which also boosts the immunity. Eating foods like garlic, onion, and ginger. And then also not only the foods, but proper supplementation, um, vitamin D, zinc, uh, zinc E, um, also whole food supplements. Um, I personally take Juice Plus because it's 30 vegetables that get that are completely bioavailable and get absorbed into the bloodstream. Um, so, you know, whichever one you choose, but taking a supplement like that <clears throat> is really important because it's, you know, just food. Uh, and then also, you can also take um, what else? Oh, herbs, you know, immune boosting herbs like echinacea, olive leaf, elderberry, and um, astragalus. Those also boost the immune system. And then really try to stay away from processed foods and sugars, which compromise the immune system. And um, as my arm disappeared there, uh, you know, one of the things you mentioned with the, with the whole foods, right? Like I, I, I know for myself, I went food shopping this morning and, and, and you kind of deal with this issue with the whole foods. And, I, and, and Lisa, we'll get your answer to the last question in a minute, but I, I just needed to, to get to Amy on this is it's a real challenge, right? In the sense of going to the market these days, it's a, you know, the quality is actually probably down on the food that's actually there in that department. Like you said, trying to, find not, you know, I'm not one of those people that necessarily goes and looks for everything organic, but you're not able to find it since you do especially look for it. And at the same time, these are things that are perishable. So when we're being told, or at least it's being intimated to us that we should go out less um, and you to eat those foods and to find those foods, you actually need to go out more. So in that sense, how do you you know, and to keep them edible, I guess, right? Like, how do you deal with that? So, um, first of all, you can buy frozen vegetables. They're just as healthy as, as the fresh ones. So um, you can stock up on those and then you don't have an issue with that. And then there are certain vegetables that just stay longer in, in the refrigerator. So fruits and vegetables like um, your cruciferous vegetables, your citrus fruits, um, your cabbages, things, you know, things of the, that nature. And then they stay for weeks at a time as long as they're packaged properly or they're kept in the refrigerator properly. So, so Lisa, let's go back to your, your, your answer on the last question about in terms of, um, you know, other things that people can do to manage their, manage their health right now when they can't see their doctors. Yeah, if you were waiting for a really urgent upcoming appointment, don't just assume that everyone's closed because a lot of the medical offices that are closed for in-person are doing telehealth visits. So even if you haven't gotten an email from the doctor or from the overall medical group, just reach out to them and see what's going on because even if they don't do telehealth, typically they know other providers that do. Um, there, and there are some things that just don't work on telehealth, right? Like your dentist or acupuncture or a chiropractor. So most of those practices are closed in New York City and statewide, certainly here in Westchester as well. But some of them are open one day a week for emergency visits only. So if you really have acute pain, reach out to um, your physical therapist or acupuncturist or chiropractor and see if um, they are seeing emergency patients or if they have colleagues at other practices who are. But if it's not an acute thing and you're just trying to stay well while you're home, I would really think about how you can get out of your apartment once a day. <clears throat> Whether that's to take a walk outside in a non-crowded park, 
whether that's just to walk up and down the stairwells in your apartment building. And I know there are people that that's not feasible for, right? I mean, we have clients in their 80s who shouldn't be going out. But if you can, I think getting the sunlight and the vitamin D and the fresh air makes a huge, huge difference. In terms of just keeping up fitness and wellness in your apartment, people feel like they need all of this complex equipment and you really don't. Think about how many exercises you could do if you have nothing, like not even a yoga mat. Squats, lunges, planks, push-ups, bridges. Um, and if you do have equipment, even if it's something as simple as a TheraBand or a yoga mat, that adds a whole other huge layer of things you could do. And if you're looking at what equipment to get for your apartment, really think about whether you're going to be using it after this is over. Right? So if you have a gym that you love or a class that you love that you plan on going back to, this isn't the moment to buy a treadmill or a giant Bowflex. Maybe <laughs> it's the moment to get something that will fit in your sock drawer like a TRX or a TheraBand or a jump rope. Very good. Uh, uh, understood. Appreciate it. So one of the things I've heard you, Lisa, talk about are um, in, in times I've seen you go out and, and speak to people is really about habits and things that people can do. And, and we've all been disrupted so much by this. Um, and again, in the way we eat, in the way we live, in the way we work, in the way we communicate, in the way we interact. Um, this seems to me the great, the best time to instantiate new habits because essentially we're some, in some ways all starting from zero. Um, so what are the best ways that you can find, you know, you can recommend, uh, you know, th that you can recommend for, for people to do that and help to continue to manage, right? So that habits people can put in place and uh, can do today to help continue to manage uh, while we're still in our current situation. I think the biggest challenge is really creating a schedule when you're at an office, you actually come home from your office. And when people are working from home, some people are naturally good at doing that, but most of us just start feeling like we're working 24 hours a day. So if you have clients or coworkers or staff that you're managing or customers who need to be able to reach you, it's okay if you've given them yourself for emergencies, but tell people what your office hours are and tell them that non-emergency phone calls won't get answered after whatever time of day is reasonable for you. And a lot of your health habits can kind of get slotted into that schedule. So if you are in an area where there are some non-crowded parks you can go to, maybe pick a time of day that you're gonna walk your dog every day. Or if it's not realistic to get outside, but there's a yoga video that you love or um, a dumbbell workout that you've been doing at home, pick a time of day and say, okay, I'm gonna do this every night at 8 p.m. or whatever time makes logical sense in your schedule. And Amy can speak to this better than I can, but same idea for meal prep, right? If you start cooking the minute you're starving, you've missed the window. <laughs> Amy, go ahead. So, so since she's, she's tossed it over, go ahead. What, what in terms of habits can people start to do now to manage what we're going through? Yeah, so I'm, I'm always about lots of self-care, right? Um, self-care is not selfish. It's just, it's so incredibly important. So while we're in this stressful time managing stress and finding more ways to boost your immune system, I think is really important. So I'm a huge believer in, in meditation and breathing exercises, um, getting proper rest, um, you know, movement, which Lisa can talk to all about how you move your body and getting exercises in and making sure you stay connected with friends and family and finding time to play. I mean, our overall well-being is connected in so many different ways, right? It's just not by what we're eating, but it's a complete mind-body experience. So, you know, Specifically for me, I, I like to wake up and meditate first thing because it really sets the tone for the day. And now with everything going on, sometimes, you know, I have to meditate twice a day. It's just 
But if you haven't implemented a practice or are unsure, it just really nourishes the entire nervous system. And doing something like that and breathing exercises help relieve anxiety and stress and it helps with sleep. Um, you know, if you're not sleeping, and Lisa just mentioned about how people, their work schedules are turned upside down. You know, some people are just working 24 seven. They don't know how to manage not being in that office. Um, and so they're not sleeping as well. So if you need to find more time to get rest, it's just so important. It's that seven to nine hours of sleep is really when your, your cells completely repair and rejuvenate themselves, right? Um, and again, making sure you stay connected to people. Loneliness is is you know one of the ways people are are dying right now people feel lonely um and it increases depression and so you know it's really important to reach out to people on a regular basis and then find ways to just play um whatever that means for you i don't care if you're getting online and doing a dance class or picking up a musical instrument or you know connecting with your hobby if you're an artist and painting or coloring or whatever it is but finding more room to feed your soul um, and all of this will help through this through this time and if you're you don't you don't seriously if you're not doing all of those i'm not suggesting that you start to do all of those tomorrow but you know creating new habits you just pick one thing and you start by implementing one new thing a week and you know whether it's with your nutrition and you need to drink more water or add something healthy to a meal or you want to start doing some meditation, you choose that one thing and you start with that. And then once it becomes a habit, um, then you add on something else. And soon all these new healthy habits become new rituals. Excellent. Thank you both. Um, so obviously yeah. we've, we've I'm, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, Lisa. Totally I'm totally with Amy about the one habit at a time. I can't tell you how many clients either at New Year's or when they're starting with a trainer or even with something like this where people know they're going to be stuck at home for a couple of months say, okay, this is the moment when I'm going to get sleep, drink water, eat vegetables, start taking vitamins, work out for an hour a day. And it's no, <laughs> pick one of those things and do it for a few days or a week and then pick another thing and just keep building on that. Mm -hmm. So you know, I know people are in different places. Some are stuck at home and bored to tears and others are now working 15 hour days from home. But if you are one of the people who has a little downtime and wants something fun to think about, there's this incredible book called The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. So it's out there as a physical book. It's out there as an audio book. And it's not a sappy self-help piece. It's really the science of how the brain works and how habits are really controlled by a different aspect of the brain than one-off decisions. And so often when we try to do things that we think are so hard and take so much willpower, it's because we're trying to make it a new decision every single time instead of making it a habit. Interesting. Interesting. So tell me more about that. What does that mean, making a, a new decision instead of a habit? Explain. So habits aren't just things we do over and over again. Habits are things that have a cue, a routine, and a reward. So whether it's a positive habit like taking a walk or maybe a less positive habit like sugary sodas and sugary drinks, there's something in our environment that's triggering us to do that. I always go on a walk on my lunch break because it's the only time I can get out of the office. Or I always have that super sugary latte at four o'clock because that's the time of day that I'm exhausted or what have you. So there's something in your environment that's prompting you to start that habit on that particular day. Then there's the habit itself, the routine of what you're doing. And then there's how you feel afterwards. So after you take a walk and get fresh air, you haven't just burned calories, you actually feel better. And even though the sugar is really not a good thing in the long run, for the second after you drink it, you probably do feel a little boost. So habits are things that we've been doing for a while that are consistent and we're not having to think about them consciously anymore. So for adding a new habit, we may wanna link it to something we're already doing. So for example, if you want to do five minutes of stretching in the morning, 
you might say, I'm going to do that before I shave or before I put makeup on. Because then there's a prompt to remember to do that. So I love all the habit tracker phone apps and I love setting the calendar reminders in your phone and all of that. But if you can link it to something you're already doing rather than just your phone buzzing at you for the 500th time today, that can really make it easier. Very good. Thank you. Um, so Amy, I want to, I want to come bring it back to you and we've talked about, you know, you specifically talked about stress, uh, during the call. So how can people manage the stresses of being around their kids and partners 24 seven, rather than actually getting to physically see others from time to time? Mm -hmm. So again, I, I would first go back to the self care piece, right? Um, I always think it's important. We got to put on our own air mask first, uh, because, if we don't, we cannot be the best version of ourself for not only us, but for all those around us. So again, self-care, but, you know, creating structure when we're around people all the time. Um, and it, again, in this new environment, which many people are not used to, creating structure. So having your work life and your, um, your home life. So making sure you have a place that you work and, and then a place that you live. And Lisa mentioned uh, about getting outside. It's so important. It, it boosts your mood. So mo most of us still have that ability to get outside. And then, you know, if you're, you have so much confined space, it also allows you that time away from, from that person. Um, creating boundaries, right? Again, where you work and where you live. And then if somebody sits there and they want to start, and they want to start listening to podcasts or videos, you know, being mindful and putting in your, putting in your headphones, because it could be really irritating to somebody else. Um, also practicing empathy. I mean, this is a time where people are just feeling unusual amounts of stress. So yes, they, may not do everything perfectly. Maybe they're not gonna put away the dishes or the laundry or whatever the expectations may be. So just practicing a little, some extra empathy during this time and then also communicating um, openly, honestly, and of course, kindly is really important. Lisa, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, definitely what Amy said about structure and creating a plan and right now everything is new, right? We have teachers who are teaching from home for the first time. We have companies that had 10% of their workforce working from home that now have 100% of their workforce working from home. So I think some people have the personality that they love new things and they want to try every new gadget and gizmo. And of course, we have the birthday parties. Uh, <laughs> and you can't try every new thing at once. And I think other people have a routine that they really love, that they've worked really hard to build their healthy habits. And now their schedule is completely disrupted. And they don't like change and they don't like new things. And they're a little overwhelmed by all this. Not just overwhelmed by the trauma and watching the news, but overwhelmed by everything in their routine being different. So, you know, really be kind to yourself with that. And it's going to take time to create a new routine. Fair enough. And, and, you know, speaking of time, we've obviously been in our current situation for several weeks. Um, you know, as we start to look forward and, and we'll try to, you know, close up and I realize there's a lot we can talk about this and a lot we can speculate a little bit. What do you think the longer lasting societal changes will be regarding our health and wellness as a result? Like we know in the short term, like to, to get any source of normalcy um, that, that, you know, people are going to have to go outside and wear masks, right? Like that's, that's not a long-term change. We don't, I don't think, um, you know, but what are the other things you think people will do or, or consciously make a decision to do uh, as we get, after the summer when we can really start thinking about what are the changes that are lasting. It, it, it's your futurist hat you get to put on in terms of how you think people are, are reacting and will react based on what you've learned over the last several weeks. Uh, Amy, let's start with you on that. Well, I think, um, I think I'm, I'm, I certainly, I don't think anybody can predict, right? Um, the experts can't predict, doctors can't predict, we, our leaders can't predict, no one knows for certain 
where we'll be. But what, I, what I'm really hoping is that, um, you know, there's, there's different kinds of people, right? We all live in different states. And the healthier your state of being is, the healthier outlook you'll have. So this is why all this when I speak of self-care and the way we eat and, and the practices we implement on a daily basis, no matter where we end up, it's our outlook and how we see things. Um, so if we can all, you know, implement these healthier ways of being, we will come out on the other end healthier. It, it's not to suggest that we don't understand that there are challenges and very difficult times and moments and the ups and the downs, but when we end up wherever we end up, if, if we experience a challenge is that we just don't sit in it and dwell in it, that we can have that moment and then we can also experience the other moments of where we can go. And you know, I, think, I think some great tools is, is reading about um, other experiences, other people's experiences and, and how they came out of it. And you know, for anyone, Lisa suggested this great book, I would also recommend, um, of uh, Victor, Victor Frankl's A Man's Search for Meaning, uh, a wonderful, uh, wonderful, amazing book. Um, he's a Holocaust survivor and how he, his mindset gave him the opportunity to really come out of that completely differently than other people. Um, and also, I, I read this article the other day, if anybody can still catch it on in, in the New York Times under, um, it was under health and wellness. It was about this, uh, man who was locked up um, in prison and he is now a fitness trainer and he trains other inmates as they're coming out to become fitness trainers instead of going back to a life of crime. And the article was about how his, one of his clients was complaining how she was lock, locked in her small New York City apartment with her partner and he, and he was driving her crazy and he said, you know, let me tell you about my life locked up in a cell right? That, that was prison and how he found um, yoga, meditation um, and prayer. And that's, that's how it got him through that time. And th they're just, I think when we can be inspired by other people's stories and how they got out of really incredibly challenging situations, it can inspire all of us, but it's really about that mindset. And when we see people get out of these situations, they made the decision in their mind to do something different than someone else was doing. So that's, that's my little bit. Lisa, go ahead. Please. I, think, I think buying behavior may really change. You know, right now we're seeing grocery stores that are creating senior hours that are early in the morning because seniors are obviously at high risk for corona. But you look at the world and you think, why didn't they do that before? A lot of seniors are a fall risk. They don't want a bunch of young people running into them. Like, why can't we keep having senior hours at the store? I think people who've been so resistant to buying things online are now going to see that all of these grocery related things, whether it's through Amazon Whole Foods or Fresh Direct and Peapod and cooking related things like apron, people are going to realize that's not so scary. It's something they really can do. Um, I think there's going to be a huge uptick with um, online food sites that sell kind of less perishable things like Food to Live or Tira or Blue Mountain Organic. And just the whole concept of buying things online. Obviously people in, in my generation have been doing that for a while and some 80s and 90s may or may not ever be open to that. But I think for boomers, they really are the movable middle. And they may switch to some of those things. And I think a lot of the recurring payments that people have made to all kinds of things, whether it's their gym membership or their co-working space, people are going to really evaluate if I didn't use that for three months, did I really need it? And for some people, the answer is going to be, yes, I really did need it. I can't wait to get back <laughs> to my co-working space or my gym. And for others, they're going to say, you know what, that wasn't really a good use of money before. It's hard to know what kind of the overall change from this would be. Like Amy said, we really don't know. I think when things finally reopen, I think 
people's first day back in a ball stadium or first day back in a Broadway theater is going to be absolutely electric. Just a sense of, oh my God, we can gather with other people again is going to be so powerful. But in terms of people's health behaviors, I think this has just created a huge conversation about health and wellness. And if it was just for the uh, crunchy granola folks before, I think a lot of our CPAs and corporate attorneys and engineers and people who wanted to be healthy but weren't constantly having wellness type conversations are going to keep talking about it. And hopefully it's going to be an ongoing part of their lives. Um, just Amy, uh, I just got a question. Could you please repeat the name of the book by, by, I think that was Victor Frankel, the Holocaust survivor. Uh, man's, a man's search for meaning. Thank you. Um, so that, that's excellent. Thank you. Um, and again, if you do have questions, you can use the, the Q and a, uh, box below cause we are winding up here and I want to make sure if you do have questions for Amy or Lisa that you are able to ask them. Uh, so please, uh, make sure you do. Um, so, you know, we talked, obviously, Amy, a lot about your thought about really about self-care, uh, you know, or sorry, it's meditation, not medication. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in terms of getting through this crisis, at least from a mental perspective, um, you know, and obviously you're, you, you are strongly believe in the fact that food affects our, your mood as well. What, what, other, what else is there? What, other, what other, you know, I don't want to call them final words. But what other things that, that you haven't gotten to in, to discuss or we haven't gotten to discuss in this conversation do you think could be helpful to our viewers and listeners? Well, look, I, I just, I think um, anyone who knows me um, or knows about my business, it's, um, I focus on a very holistic approach to well-being. And that's how all areas of your life affect your overall health, right? So nutrition is incredibly important. Um, the way we think, the way we breathe, it's, it's all connected. We can't pull the body apart. The body is a whole system. So there is a whole systems approach to how we treat it and, and how we ultimately feel. So everything I spoke to today uh, addresses that whole systems approach from the way you eat to proper supplementation simply because you know, we have compromised gut health. So there's other ways to, uh, you know, that we're not absorbing nutrients. So they need to be supplemented in certain ways to the way we're breathing, right? I think that's uh, so incredibly important to the way we move our bodies, to how we stay connected to people and how we literally feed our souls with creativity. And it absolutely is instrumental in how we come out the other end. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just, I know it, it's how I healed my body. I suffered with chronic illness uh, since I was 12 years old. And when I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, I mean, I literally healed my body by using this whole approach. And it's what I do with my clients and it's how people heal. So even though this particular time is very challenging. It's not that I don't feel those challenges. I, I can manage it better because of all the tools I have in my toolbox. The more tools you have, the better off you'll be. Very good. Thank you. And, and Lisa, you know, obviously we've talked about the physical things that people can do uh, that don't, you know, um, you know, how important, you know, kind of what else is there in terms of how important movement uh, and, and things that can do, because obviously, you know, we can all sit in front of these chairs and do meetings for hours on end. What other aspects of movement and, and, and um, things are that we can tell our viewers and listeners in terms of making a, a, a positive change uh, coming in through the rest of this crisis and then they come out and how they can positively affect their life, uh, you know, from that perspective. I think movement is really important as we're trying to keep our sanity. I mean, we're all getting tough phone calls, whether it's about Corona or other things. You know, this week I had a phone conversation with an old friend who's a cancer patient who's now in hospice. And, you know, we're all hearing these things from friends, from family, from clients, from the news. So it's just so important to, uh, to give ourselves some time and not assume, okay, I'm not doing hours a day of commute, so I should be able to get an extra three hours of work done. 
if you can, that's great, but I don't think that's really the goal right now. <laughs> and the more that you can get out and move, whether that's by yourself, whether it's with a pet, the better we're going to be able to uh, deal with all of these things. Yeah. So if you feel like you've been stuck in the same routine for a long time, try something else. There's so many free classes, so many affordable classes online right now. And maybe get your, maybe get your family or, or roommate involved. So it's doing uh, everything alone. Sorry about that, Lisa. So uh, how, how can people find you? Lisa, how can people find you? My website is on the mend fitness.com. Mm -hmm. Or you're always welcome to actually call my cell, which is 914-563-3026. Dangerous. Dangerous thing you're doing. <laughs> Amy, how can, <laughs> how can people reach out to you if they have other questions? Um, so my, my website is thewellnessmap.org. Um, or, you know, my mobile is 917-903-6024. Thank you so much. Um, and again, if, if you missed that um, and missed any part of this webinar, again, we'll have this on the Voice Wealth Management YouTube page, hopefully in about a week. Um, and uh, next week on Discuss with Russ, we're going to have Mike Barilla of Compass Real Estate uh, discussing re the future of real estate in New York and the New York area, both commercial and residential. So that'll be an interesting financial, financially aimed conversation. Uh, I want to thank Amy Salmon of the Wellness Map and Lisa Snow of On The Men Customized Fitness and Massage. And if you have any questions for me, want to reach out to me, you can reach out. Uh, our website is www.voicewealth.com. You've got the little uh, thing in the corner there, Voice Wealth Management. And uh, my email is russell.rivera. R-U-S-S-E-L-L dot Rivera. That's river with an A at the end at it, at, at the end of it at voicewealth.com. So uh, I like to say like Mariano, but I think he's too old now for that to work. Uh, most people won't get that one. And uh, so thank you uh, again to our guests and to you for all watching and listening. And we'll see you next week, two o'clock with Mike Barilla. Yeah. Be well, everybody.